In this video, we're going to define and look at independent probabilities. And so um, what we have is we have compound probabilities, or, or specifically within compound probabilities, we're going to do independent probabilities today. And that's just the idea that um, it's the probability of two or more events happening. What happens if we were to flip a coin twice? We kind of looked at, at that in the last video, but um, we're going to look at that more in depth here. So compound is just going to be more than one, and we're going to look specifically at independent probabilities. I'm going to define that in a minute. But what we're going to have is we're going to have the multiplication rule. Don't be thrown off by this symbol. It just means the probability of A and B happening is equal to the probability of A times the probability of B. So you want to write this down. We're going to talk about that. And so basically what this is saying is that to find the, the, the probability of two events happening, we're going to do the probability of the first event times the probability of the second event. Now, um, you might be thinking to yourself, but why do we multiply our probabilities? Maybe intuitively you're thinking, why don't we add? And so I've got an example that I think will maybe help us understand why adding is not a good route to take. Um, but let's say we want to find the probability of getting heads on a coin flip twice in a row. So we want to find the probability of heads and then another heads. And I could, I could show that like that. Well, if, if, and I want you to hear me on this, if you were trying to add, you would say, well, it's one half uh, is your probability for the first coin flip, and then one half is the probability for the second coin flip. And so if you added those, you'd get 1 or 100%. And as you can see, that doesn't really make sense. It doesn't make sense to have two coin flips and have the probability of getting heads and then heads be greater than the probability of, of um, you know, getting heads for any individual coin flip. Uh, I'm trying to think if I could put that into words, but the probability of a compound event will never be greater than the probability of the individual events. That doesn't make sense. Okay, so that's, I'm just showing this example to show you why we don't add. Okay, now let's look at, but why do we multiply them? And so once again, I don't know if this is going to put this um, issue at ease to you, but uh, I think that looking at it as a tree diagram can help us understand that. So let's, let's think of uh, the probability of heads and heads. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this at two different events. Um, I'm going to do um, coin flip one, and that's our first event. And then we have coin flip two. And that's our second event. Well, for our first event, we could have either a heads or a tails. And then from, from there, if I flipped heads the first time, then my second flip could be a heads or a tails. And then if I flipped tails the first time, my first event could be heads or a tails. And so what we look at is, so for our first event, if we're looking at heads and heads, our way to get a success is we have one out of two outcomes. And so if I don't want to, if, if I flip the tails, then we've already messed up our experiment anyways. So if I flip heads for the first event, and then heads for the second event, you can see that my first event had a probability of one half, and then the second event had, its probability was one half of one half. And that's why we get one fourth. It's one out of four total outcomes. So I don't know if this, like I said, I don't know if that puts the issue at rest to you, but hopefully that illustrates a little bit more why we multiply these independent probabilities. Now, let's look at this. So, so a simple game involves flipping a coin and rolling a six-sided die. So we want to find the following. What's the probability of getting a tails on the coin flip, but then a five when you roll the dice? Well, these are independent events. The, obviously, the coin flip does in no way infect the, or affect the die roll. So your first event is going to be one half. Your second event, oops, your second event is going to be 1 6, and you're going to multiply those. So there is a 1 in 12 chance in this game that you get a tails for your coin flip and a 5 on your die roll. Uh, let's jump down here. What's the probability of getting a tails and a 3? Well, probability of getting tails is still 1 half. Probability of getting a 3, once again, be careful, it's not 3 out of 6. There's only 1 3 out of 6 total outcomes on that die. So when you multiply straight across, there's a 1 in 12 chance of that happening. Probability of heads and an even number. Well, the coin flip's the easy part. Now, what's your probability of getting an even number? Well, if I came over here, there's six total outcomes, and then you have three successes. So, three successes out of six outcomes for that coin or for that uh, die roll, and you get three twelfths, which is one fourth. Kind of running out of room over there, but there's a one in four chance of this event happening. And then lastly, uh, what's the probability of a tails and a number greater than two? So our tails is one half, 
And then a number greater than two, let's, let's look at that. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six on the die roll. Any of those four outcomes would be a success there. Those are all numbers greater than two. So if I multiply this by four over six and multiply straight across, we get four over 12, which is one third. So it looks to me like out of all these different um, experiments, it looks like this one has the greatest probability of happening right here. Now, before we go any further, we're about to do uh, a lot of these probability questions uh, deal with decks of cards. And so um, a lot of times kids are not familiar with decks of cards. And so I want you to see this and be familiar with it. There are four suits. Two of the suits are red. Two of the suits are black. Okay. Know the four suits. You got hearts, diamonds, clubs, and spades. And then within each suit, it goes from ace all the way to king. The jack, queen, king are what we call face cards. Okay. So there's three face cards in every suit, the jack, queen, king. There's 13 cards in every suit, and there's four suits. If you don't know that, if you're not super familiar with the deck of cards, write that down. Now, what I want you to do is basically try these on your own. And so it says using a standard deck of 52 cards, which I just kind of explained to you what that was. If you draw a card and then draw a second card after replacing the first card, and that's really important with what we're doing today. We're going to talk more later about why that's important. But it, it, it's a, for now, know that you're drawing the first card out, putting it back in, and then drawing the second card. So let's find the probability of drawing an eight and then an ace, okay? So whenever we look at this, if we draw an eight, okay, um, there are four eights in the deck. There are four eights out of 52 cards because there's one in each suit. But then if you draw that ace, you put it back in, or if you draw that eight, you put it back in, excuse me, and then you draw the ace, well, that's also four over 52. So those are your two events. And so then as we've established, you want to multiply those probabilities. So whenever I multiply straight across, you get 16 over 2704, which would simplify. If you wanted a simplified fraction, that would be 1 out of 169. And you could uh, just punch that in your calculator if you wanted the, the decimal or the, uh, the percent there. And so then we're probably drawing a black face card. Oh, actually, let's jump down to number 2. Let's draw a face card and then a red 7, Okay. So if we're drawing a face card, you got to think there's three in every suit, and there's four suits. So there's 12 face cards. There's 12 ways to have a success there out of 52 total cards. And then your ways to draw a red seven. Well, there's the seven of diamonds and the seven of hearts. So there's two ways to do that out of 52 total cards. So if I multiplied straight across there, I'd have 24 out of 2704. And then if you simplified, um, you could divide an 8 out of both of those, and that would be 3 over 338. No, don't worry. I did not do that math in my head. I just have my notes here from when I worked these out earlier. Now, let's look at the probability of drawing a black face card and then an ace. As with several of these, pause the video, try this for yourself, and then see if you can do it. But the black face card. So we said there's three face cards in every suit, and there's two black suits. So there are six black face cards out of 52. And then our only ways to draw an ace, there's only one of those in each suit. So when you multiply straight across, you get 24 out of 2704. So kind of interesting, your probability of this happening is exactly the same as your probability of this happening. Look, 24 over 2704. So that also would simplify to the 3 over 338. And then last question, uh, on this slide at least, it says the probability of ace and then an ace and then a jack. Okay. So you draw your first ace out. There's four of those out of 52, but keep in mind, you, then you replace it, right? I want to emphasize this. Then you put it back in. So then your second draw is going to have the exact same odds to draw another ace. And then you put it back in. And then your third draw to get the jack is kind of the same thing. There's only four jacks in the deck as well. So whenever you multiply that straight out, you're going to get 64 in your numerator, 140608 in your denominator. And if you want to simplify, 1 over 2197. As I said earlier, you can fill these into the calculator and get the decimals or the percents that go along with them. Now, that's all the math we're going to do. Let's recap. I want to recap a couple things. Independent events. The multiplication rule from the previous slides works only if the events are independent. Okay? And what that means is that two events are independent if the result of the second event is not affected by the result of the first event. When we did the uh, coin flip, the first coin flip does not affect the second coin flip. When I do a coin flip, it doesn't affect the dice roll. When I draw one card and put it back into the deck, that does not affect the other one. So know, know that these are all independent. Later, we're going to look at events where the first event affects the, the second event. Okay. 
Um, oh, and there it is. For example, you flip a coin, the first coin flip does not change your odds for the second coin flip. And if you draw a card out of a deck and replace it, the probability of the second drawn card does not change. And so, um, and then a reminder, there's your rule for it. The probability of A and B happening, that means and, we'll talk about that more in a later video, is the probability of A times the probability of B.